If you are an author who has been offered a contract with a publisher and you're about to get on a phone call with that publisher, but you do not have an agent to help you go through it, these are some things you need to know about handling that phone call. Now, I've said it again and again and again, it is incredibly important to make sure you have some people on your team. Your publishing lawyer should be going over the contract before you sign it. No one else in this world is only on your team when it comes to contracts and contract negotiation. Your agent is not, the publishing house is not, nobody's looking out for you. Your publishing lawyer does not have skin in the game. They get paid to go over that contract and make sure you're getting a fair deal and to make sure you are not getting taken advantage of. Your agent, if you have an agent, is in it for themselves. They might make some concessions on your contract to make sure they can get a contract for the next three people. So you have to have a publishing lawyer, period, end of discussion when it comes to signing legal documentation. Now, your lawyer's not going to sit in on this phone call with you, but they are going to go over the contract with you after the fact. So if you're working with a small or a medium sized publisher, because you're not getting into those big publishers without an agent, you will be responsible for having those conversations with the publisher. And chances are you're going to be getting on a phone call with somebody from the publishing house. And oftentimes it is the owner of the publishing house. Now I have done this before. There are good experiences. There are bad experiences. And you need to be paying attention to those flags. The first thing that you need to know is that you need to be in a quiet space to take this professional phone call. You are not on parent duty. You are not on dog duty. You are not paying attention to the other adults in the room. Get yourself in a space that is quiet and is not accessible by anybody else who might need mom or dad, right? So if you have to go sit in your car in the driveway to do this while grandma watches the kids, that's what you need to do. The publishing house will tell you when your call is going to be. You can kind of say, oh, well, I'm, I'm working at this point. Can we do it at another time? But you also have to understand that if you are working with a publisher, it's kind of on their schedule. And so I have definitely taken off days of work to have these conversations with publishers. So you need to make those decisions. Where are your priorities? What can you do? What flexibility do you have in this? And see if you can make it work best for your schedule. But if it is what it is, you could potentially be walking away from a deal if you do not work with them. So just take all of it into consideration when you're having those conversations and then make sure you're in that quiet space. You need to have a list of questions that you're going to be asking. So the things that are important to you. So you're going to be talking about who's responsible for what, what are they responsible for? What are you responsible for? How much input do you have on the cover or on editing or on the ending of the book specifically ask, please ask, please ask if they're going to make you change the ending. I have seen far too many authors sign deals and then the publisher said, but you have to change the entire ending because we don't like that. And then you're under contract and you have no choice. So ask that question in advance. Ask the hard questions. Do I have to do this? Is this going to be important to you? These things are important to me. Where do you stand on these? To make sure that you're on the same page. If you are not, do not sign that contract for the love of all things. Do not sign something you're not on the same page with. They're not changing their mind and they're a bigger entity than you. So if you are feeling like it's not going to work for you or you don't like some of the rules and regulations, don't work with them. Don't be desperate. Don't sign things out of desperation. So you want to make sure you have a list of questions. And if you want to do a video specifically on the questions that you can be asking a publisher, we can do that. There's a lot of opportunity here for this, but you want to make sure you've got a list. Then you have to know they're going to call you. So you need to be ready with your phone, like have all the stuff on ready to go. If you've been sending things to voicemail, make sure that's taken care of so that you can answer it at the appropriate time and be ready. Like as it starts to ring, one ring, two ring, pick up that phone, right? We're not letting it go to voicemail. And so you need to be aware that they're probably going to greet you and then they're going to give you a lot of information. It's a lot of active listening skills when it comes to these conversations. Cross off or check anything that they address and have paper to take notes. Do not sit there click, click, clicking on a keyboard to take those notes. Make sure you're writing things down. You can record that audio just for yourself, okay? If you're not getting permission to record things, don't use it anywhere. But if you need to like have that to have notes later on, you can do that as well. And then you're doing a lot of active listening. Then you're going to be asking follow-up questions. You want to make sure it's a good fit. So you want to make sure you have a good rapport with that person. So now is the time where we have a little bit of a horror story. And you've heard me tell this one before because it's just pure chaos. If you see these red flags, run away. I did. And thank goodness I did because later it came out that they were stealing from their authors and berating their authors in public and intimidating them and like all sorts of awful things. 
So with that preface, I once got on a phone call with the owner of a publishing company, very well-known publishing company that to this day is still in the industry because despite dropping all their authors and getting sued by all of their authors, they are using their new authors who weren't smart enough to look into them to pay off the old authors. I get on a phone call with this woman and she took this professional phone call while walking on her treadmill. She was just working out. She was multitasking. That is highly unprofessional. I should have hung up at that point or asked when she wanted to call back, but I didn't. I was polite. And so she then berated her other authors. She talked down about them. She berated her husband who went outside and was mowing the lawn right outside of where she was on the phone with a professional phone call. And she she did a lot of, I love your book. Your book is so great, but you have to work on all these things. It was a lot of like the backhanded compliments where she says, oh, I love all these things, but you're horrible. All these things are so great, but you're gonna have to fix all this stuff. And it's a power move. And so there were just a lot, a lot of things and berating their authors, talking badly about her husband, that all of that told me she will do that to me as well. She's going to acquire this book. She's going to then hold all this stuff over my head and manipulate me to make me change things and do things and behave the way that she wants. And right now on this phone call, she is judging whether or not I am going to be a compliant author. And girl thought I was. <laughs> she was very, very angry when I did not sign that contract. She had her assistant like in my inbox every five seconds. Where's this contract? Why haven't you signed this? My lawyer also warned me off. I, I wasn't going to sign it, but I showed it to my lawyer anyway. And she said, I can't tell you what I know, but don't sign this. And all that stuff came out after the fact. So you have to be the utmost professional when it comes to these calls. Even if things are going wrong, even if you know this is not a good fit for you, finish the conversation because these publishers do talk to each other. They will, they will, I mean, that woman would call you out from stage by name, even if you didn't work with her. So you want to make sure you are professional throughout the course of the conversation, whether it's really good or really bad in this phone call. And you need to make sure you're writing notes, you're taking information. I like to get to the point of the contract when they offer the contract, by all means, even if I know I'm not going to be taking this contract, please send it over. I'll read it over so that I know what's going on. I want to know industry standards. I want to see those trends. I want to see what people are having from contract to contract. And I absolutely want my lawyers looking over these things so that we can have these valuable conversations. Because even if I'm not going to sign it, there's a lot we can all learn from these things. And there's a lot of really good, valuable conversations we can have to make sure we're helping the industry to grow and not to get into these bad situations. So go through the conversation, be polite, be respectful, ask good, valuable questions, and then make sure you're not officially agreeing to anything until you have that contract in your hand and your lawyer and you have gone through it, redlined it, fixed it, negotiated, making sure that you are taken care of with this. These phone calls can feel really scary. They're not that scary. Especially if you go into it knowing you're doing your best to protect your manuscript. And if it's not a good fit, you're not taking it. We're not acting out of desperation here. A lot of people get on these phone calls and they're very, very desperate. And that shows. And then they know exactly what they can and cannot pull with you. So you need to make sure that you are taking care of your manuscript. There are lots of options for you with publishing. And you don't let them know that they're the only ones. Don't let them know. So when they get through that phone call... Say thank you so much for having this phone call with me. I really appreciate you taking the time and effort to discuss this with me. I look forward to taking a look at the contract and I will let the other publishers know that you have made an offer and I will get back to you within two weeks. Okay, you can give them a specific time. You can say two weeks, you can say 10 days. 10 days pro is probably a little bit better at this point in time. And then you are then able to use that to leverage potential other deals. So if you have queried anybody else, whether or not they have read it, whether or not they're making offers on it, whether or not they're thinking about it, you now have the opportunity. The second you get an official offer, you can go and say, hey, another publisher has made an offer. Don't tell them who it is. Don't tell them how much it's for. Nothing. Just say, I have received an offer on this manuscript from another publisher, and I have to get back to them within 10 days. If you want the opportunity to look at this, this is your opportunity. Thank you so much for your consideration. And then potentially you can have people asking for those full manuscripts, actually bumping it you up to the top of the list to see if they want it or not. Now, if you are getting an offer from somebody that's like super big name, maybe, maybe you want to drop a name. But honestly, that's really more agent territory. When you get into the big five publishers and you're working with an agent, let them name drop. 
but you probably will not benefit from name dropping in terms of negotiating a smaller contract. So just make sure you're using this to leverage the opportunity to work with other potential publishers for your book. Give them the opportunity and give yourself that space. So two weeks, 10 days, whatever it happens to be so that everybody's got time with this and let that publisher that you were on the phone call with know I have to reach out to these other people that have my manuscript and let them know. So it is going to take me two weeks so that they have enough time to make some decisions as well or to make offers as well. And then you're going to have a negotiation if you get to that point. But always run that contract by your publishing lawyer. Make sure everything is taken care of for you because you don't want to end up in a bad situation. I've seen so, 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 so many people end up in really bad, really toxic, really scary, really... um financially crippling situations. So just please be careful. Make sure you have that publishing lawyer. We've got lots of videos with publishing lawyers and entertainment lawyers and all the things here on the channel, how to find one, how to work with them, what happens when you have one, all those things. So drop your questions on working with these publishers and negotiating and navigating these phone calls down below and follow along for daily videos, helping you navigate the world of publishing from your writing to your publishing to your marketing to make this your most profitable year with the least amount of stress, time commitment, and overwhelm possible. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.